In every ringing phone, in every call that bridges voices across borders, lies a silent system that keeps our conversations connected. It's something most of us take for granted. A few digits dialed before a number that magically links us to another country. Those numbers known as telephone country codes may seem like mere prefixes, but their creation marked one of humanity's greatest steps toward global communication. From the chaos of early telephone systems to the birth of an organized, interconnected world, this is the story of why telephone country codes were created and how they changed the way we communicate right here on History of Simple Things. Telephone was invented in the late 19th century by Alexander Graham Bell. The idea of speaking to someone miles away was revolutionary. But every call required a human operator to manually connect wires between switchboards. As networks expanded from towns to nations, each developed its own system without any global standard. Dialing rules differed everywhere. And when international calls began, linking these systems became chaotic. The world needed a unified method, one that could tell both machines and people where a call was headed. Before country codes existed, international calls relied on human operators who manually linked one network to another. In the 1930s and 1940s, Calling overseas meant going through several exchanges, often taking minutes or even hours to connect. Each link added delay and distortion. As global communication expanded after World War II, this outdated system could no longer keep up. The rise of business, diplomacy, and media made one thing clear. The world needed a faster, more direct way to talk. The foundation for a true global telephone network had to be built. By the early 1950s, engineers and organizations began working toward the idea of direct dialing, a system where users could place calls to foreign countries without needing human intermediaries. But direct dialing required one critical innovation, a standardized code system that identified each nation uniquely. Without it, the telephone networks couldn't know where to send a call automatically. That's where the International Telecommunication Union, or ITU, stepped in. The ITU, a specialized agency of the United Nations, was already managing global telegraph and radio standards. Now, it turned its attention to the telephone network, determined to make the world's calls speak the same numerical language. The ITU's efforts led to the creation of the World Numbering Plan, formalized in 1964 as ITUT Recommendation E-164. This system divided the world into regional zones, assigning each nation a unique code so that calls could be automatically recognized and routed to the right destination. It was a simple yet brilliant solution, turning a tangled web of local networks into one coordinated global map where every country could finally speak the same numerical language. But creating the codes was more than just assigning numbers. It meant reshaping telephone systems worldwide. Each country had to adjust its internal numbering to fit the new global plan, a massive effort involving thousands of exchanges and millions of users. Technicians reconfigured switches to recognize international prefixes and automate connections. The introduction of the plus sign, signaling a call leaving the local network, made the process universal. Combined with a country code, it allowed phones everywhere to recognize destinations instantly, bridging networks across the world. The first successful transnational direct dialing call took place in 1957 between London and Paris. It was a quiet but groundbreaking moment in communication history. For the first time, someone could dial an overseas number directly without operator assistance, 
using nothing more than a series of digits. That simple act represented years of engineering cooperation, diplomacy, and technical precision. Soon, other countries followed suit, and by the 1970s, international direct dialing became common across much of the developed world. Those few numbers before a phone line, once a complex routing system, became the invisible key that opened connections across continents. The creation of country codes also had a profound cultural and political meaning. Each code wasn't just a number, it was a symbol of national identity. For newly independent nations, obtaining their own code from the ITU was like raising a flag in the digital landscape, a recognition that their voice mattered on the world stage. It wasn't unusual for countries to lobby for specific codes or argue about how regions should be grouped. Over time, these codes became deeply ingrained in national systems, used in everything from business cards to emergency services, from international data routing to mobile networks. Today, as we make calls over mobile phones and internet-based services, the legacy of telephone country codes still lives on. Even with apps like WhatsApp, Zoom, or Skype, where calls are routed through the internet rather than traditional phone lines, those same country codes help verify identities and prevent confusion. They remain a crucial part of the world's telecommunications backbone. When you dial plus 44 for the United Kingdom, plus 81 for Japan, or plus 63 for the Philippines, you're tapping into a structure built over half a century ago one that continues to keep our world connected, even in the age of wireless networks and satellites. Ultimately, telephone country codes were created to bring order to chaos, turning a patchwork of isolated networks into one global system. Born from necessity and refined through cooperation, they transformed distance into connection. And though we rarely contemplate them today, every international call reminds us that even a few digits can unite the world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.